Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another You Go First podcast. Today, we are going to talk about one of my personal favorites. My, Who gave you that? Uh, I don't remember. I think I found it, actually. Oh, you think you found the stuffed yeah. animal of the oven? Yeah, it's a, it's a Loch Ness monster made out of, I think, kilt material, plaid. And this topic is something that probably is one of the first memories I had of why I ever got interested in like the supernatural, right? Like I used to think I watch Unsolved Mysteries and I think they had a Nessie episode or something. And as a kid, I'm like, oh, what's that in the lake? Oh, do you believe in What about in you? Nessie? Hell yeah, I believe in you Nessie. You believe in Nessie? And let me guess, you, Mr. Uncool, Mr. I'm too cool to believe in anything. I hate fun. Austin Castle doesn't believe in it. No, I don't believe in the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, yeah, okay. We can just end the podcast here. All right, everybody. Thanks right, for guys. coming by. Have a good night. Remember to stay spooky. Bye. <laughs> now, um, first of all, I've actually been to Loch Ness, which is where you got that stuffed animal from because I brought it all the oh. way from Scotland back to you. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> um, But no, I, I'm, I love the idea of a giant sea monster. You just hate fun. No, I just, I'm just sorry. You hate I fun. don't believe in things just for it to be fun. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're lame. You're a square. Hmm. A square. That's not a square. It's like a rectangle. No, this is a rectangle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, like Fernando said, we're going to talk about Nessie today. So grab your kilt, buckle up, and uh, enjoy the ride <laughs> of the magical Leo Plurodon. <laughs> Which I think Nessie's a Leo Plurodon. Anyways, to begin. Like their castles, Scotland has more locks, or lakes, than anyone can begin to justify. There are so many of these bodies of water, in fact, that no number has ever actually been agreed upon by limnologists which are people who study lakes. I don't know why we couldn't just say people who study lakes, but here we are. Despite this lack of consensus, most have at least agreed that there are over 30,000 throughout the country. Among these sea of lakes lies the now world famous Loch Ness, which is located just outside the city of Inverness. Upon visiting the historical landmark, you'll be greeted with a beautiful view of the Scottish highlands, as well as extremely vast and dark waters, due to all the peat found in the area. Additionally, you better know how to swim if you plan on jumping in, as the lock is very, very deep, 755 feet to be exact. Because of these attributes, Scottish citizens and tourists alike have often speculated about what secrets could possibly be lurking within these murky depths. In 1933, they would get an answer. One day, while driving down a highway along Loch Ness, a man named George Spicer and his wife noticed something odd rustling around the brush up ahead. Fearing that it might be an animal about to leap into the road, the man gently hit the brakes and proceeded to stop. Why wouldn't you just like, I'd aggressively hit the brakes. Well, back anyway. then they didn't have ABS braking, so he would have just skidded. All right, don't make up stuff. <laughs> Peering into the brush, he quickly realized that whatever it was, it was gigantic. As he came to this realization, the creature ventured out onto the path in front of the couple. The pair described what they saw as the most extraordinary form of animal. Allegedly, it had a humongous body and possessed a long, wavy neck. In its mouth, it carried a bloody carcass of a sheep. The beast <laughs> then proceeded to walk towards Loch Ness and promptly disappeared. They then immediately reported the unbelievable sighting to the local newspaper. Thoughts, Austin? Thoughts? Love you guys. Fake, 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 fake. Well, first of all, let me start off. We're American, so we love to compare like the size of things to objects. You know, a car weighs as much as a thousand bananas or whatever. You know, um, so the dark, the deepest part of Loch Ness is so deep, in fact, that you could take the Pyramid of Giza. And also, why couldn't you just say soil for Pete? Why did you have to say Pete? <laughs> well, soils everywhere. Pete specifically will create that dark effect in the lake. You could just say, so it's dirt, Austin. <laughs> it's grassy dirt. Anyways, you could take the Pyramid of Giza, put that at the deepest part, and stack the Statue of Liberty on top of that, and the torch would be barely sticking out of the water right there. So it's Wait, very, very deep. Is the pyramid really that short? Those things are massive. Oh, they're only 455 feet? I mean, it's still tall for a bunch of people from hundreds of years ago. Although, did they build that? I don't think they did. Another future it podcast. It was aliens. <laughs> See, there's, I believe, some things. Uh, anyways, so next up, though, I just want to know what these people were smoking or drinking. They saw a dinosaur walk across the road. 
I'm sorry, that did not happen. I mean, what if it did, though? <laughs> Just like how, like, the Native Americans had folklore of Bigfoot way before the 1969 uh, sighting or whatever. Every ancient to us culture has legends and stories. We have always used legends to explain things that we don't understand. What is, you know, that's why, like, for How example... How do all those toys get under the Christmas tree on Christmas night? <laughs> well, how do they? It's one man and his team of, <laughs> not, like, what, eight, nine reindeer? I think it's, well, okay, counting Rudolph, yes, nine. Yes, right? you have to count Rudolph, dude, unless you're a fucking bigot. <laughs> this is man's work. <laughs> this is man. No, it's <laughs> Susie. For those of you who don't know, we're just talking about a part in Rudolph, the original. Like the, the claymation one from 60s, yeah. 70s? Rankin Bass. Know. Rankin Bass. I don't know what that is, dude. It's the guy who made it. Anyways, getting a little off topic here. Okay, so I'm sorry. I apologize. I don't believe a dinosaur walked across the road in... 1900 scotland i apologize this is why we have 18 subscribers us <laughs> it's because of your poor piss poor attitude well we're probably gonna lose some more after this <laughs> probably especially if you said it was man's work because my attitude ain't changing are you good you got anything else to add no rebuttal or are you just gonna let this story just i mean not i hate you that's about it okay good to know noted and also you did not give me this yes i did <laughs> i bought it from a souvenir shop right in front of Loch Ness. Nah, I found this at a at a Goodwill, I think. <laughs> After the insane story that Fernando just explained leaked and was distributed by the Daily Mail, the entirety of Scotland became infatuated with the idea that a sea monster was currently residing in one of their very own lochs. And possibly still currently resides. Sure. As a result of this... People began to descend upon the lake in droves in search of this elusive creature. Eventually, even professional big game hunters were called in to catch the giant cryptid. So, yeah, so all these people who are, well, no, big game, big game hunter, I guess, didn't exist back then. You know, the PC shoot 'em up game for the, you just went into the woods and shot deer. What game? Big game big hunter? Game, big game hunter. Oh, yeah, remember yeah, those yeah, games? Yeah, yeah. I remember those games. <laughs> Nessie fever hit its fever pitch when oh, the oh, Daily oh. Mail cut a check. For its own big game hunter, a man named Marmaduke Wetherill. What a name. <laughs> that is a man's man. <laughs> I can just, he must have had a kick-ass mustache. You know, speaking of like your stupid puns, like there was a, I, I totally missed that you made a Zootopia pun in the last one. After I called you the, the dad rabbit, you said, let's hop into this or something. I was like, I really didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> you're, so, you're so stupid, dude. So annoying. Go. Marmaduke Wetherill. <laughs> Shortly after arriving in the Scottish Highlands, Wetherill made his first big discovery on the banks of Loch Ness. In the mud was the perfect imprint of a foot that had appeared to have come from a large, unknown, soft-footed animal. Immediately, a cast was made of the print and sent off to the Scottish Museum of Natural History for analysis. I have been there. It's the best museum I've ever been to. Uh, unfortunately, after being analyzed, the scientific institution had some bad news for Wetherill. The print had come from a hippopotamus's foot. How did a hippo get in Scotland, you may find yourself asking? Well, apparently during the massive combing over of Loch Ness, somebody thought it would be funny to take their hippo foot ash tray. How do you have that? I don't know. But yes, it was a thing. Uh, it was all the rage back then, I guess. I don't know. Smoking was huge, so why not put it in? And doing horrible things with exotic animals, like ivory and all that stuff, was huge. So, sure, why not? Uh, oh, is so that yeah. why you have the ivory vase in your house? Oh, yeah. My whole house is actually made of ivory. Yeah, no, you hate, you hate elephants. <laughs> I actually made the rims from a Miata out of ivory. Uh, I've seen it. <laughs> so, they took the hippo-footed ashtray and they shoved it in the mud as a joke. As silly and harmless as the prank may have seen, the hijinks cost Wetherill his entire reputation as a big game hunter. He was promptly ripped apart in the papers, and his credibility was ultimately left in tatters along the coast of Loch Ness. Sometimes you can still see pieces floating along the banks. <laughs> Immediately after Are you this... Happy? Are you happy with that one? I am, clearly. Oh, yeah, okay. Someone has to think I'm funny. <laughs> Might as well be myself. It's probably your mother. <laughs> <laughs> probably. 
love you mom thanks for supporting me <laughs> <laughs> financially in every kind of way the most handsome boy in the world she says <laughs> Immediately after this news came to light, the Nessie craze immediately died with his reputation. Nessie fever was now officially done and dusted. At least for a little while, that is. Poor Marmaduke Weatherall. Anyways, he'll be vindicated in my next segment, and you'll find out why. Cue the surgeon's photograph. One day, the follow. Oh, one day, the follow. Oh, one day, the following year. Okay. One day the following year, a surgeon by the name of Robert Kenneth Wilson was taking pictures of the landscape around Loch Ness, which happened to be just outside of his house, when he noticed something sticking out of the misty surface of the lake. What is it? it? Absolute horror and disbelief, he realized that he what he was looking at was, in fact, the long neck of the elusive Loch Ness monster. Without hesitation, he did what so many other cryptid hunters had been unable to do. He took a picture. Holy shit! <laughs> After developing the photograph, he realized that he had gotten a clear shot. What? No, no, beast. no. That's not what's written. I don't care what's written. He got a clear <laughs> shot of the beast in the shot. The subject is seen as an almost dinosaur-like creature, a Leopleurodon, and possesses an extremely long and lanky neck. Quickly, the snapshot became known as the surgeon's photograph. Because people finally had an idea of what Nessie looked like, people began to speculate about what the giant reptile could be and how it ended up in Loch Ness. After much conversation, believers began to settle on the notion that Loch Ness Monster was some variant of the plesiosaur that had somehow evolved from a colony that had survived the Cretaceous paleon Paleogene, or the K-slash-PG, extinction event over 66 million years ago. While at first glance, this may seem like a rather ridiculous conclusion, not really, it should be noted that the coacanth? Co co you can't even say it. What is it? <laughs> uh, the coacanth is a lobe-finned fish of the type that gave rise to the first tetrapods. I AKA... just need you to pronounce coacanth. <laughs> it should be noted that the coacanth, which is a lobe finned fish of the type that give rise to the first tetrapods aka four-legged animals which obviously everyone knows was thought to have gone extinct from the same exact apocalyptic event as well that was until however i don't know why we need both of those it was discovered by a diver in 1938 off the coast of south africa so if this water-based species could survive why couldn't the plesiosaur for decades the authenticity of the surgeon's photograph would be widely accepted as authentic, because it should be, by the Nessie-believing community. Austin, take it away. <laughs> can, can you finish it? I, I got nothing left to say. That was until somebody had to go ahead and question it, right? <laughs> so stupid, though. Why would they do that? It's obviously, it's proof. Why would we question anything? You're right. Obviously, it's a fact that a dinosaur walked across the road into the Loch, into Loch Ness. I don't see what's so hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I break it down why it's hard to believe? I mean, you can, but you're wrong. So, a plesiosaur, as far as I know, because a reptile was cold-blooded, the event... That See, that's as far as you know. How much do you actually know, though? The extinction. Are you of... an archaeologist? A paleontologist? I took a couple you courses. You are a criminal <laughs> justice major. I took a couple courses, too. They were electives. So the extinction event we are talking about is when the meteor struck the Earth and wiped out the dinosaurs. Why Wrong. did it wipe out the dinosaurs? Because Wrong. it blocked out the sun, which got cold. And all cold-blooded things that were above ground died. Allegedly. Allegedly. You're right. Allegedly. Oh, I'm shit. sorry, Austin. I didn't know you excavated every cold-blooded animal <laughs> from that time. <laughs> oh. Remind me again where you did your excavating. On the local beach. <laughs> I had my plastic shovel in my bucket. I had a little sandcastle thing, like mold, too. I saw one sand dollar and you're like, yep, that's it. Everything's dead. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I hope I win the lottery. I'm going to go and I'm going to become a doctor in archaeology. I'll probably never work in archaeology. I hope you spend like 10 years doing that. <laughs> yeah. Go to Montana and, and bother other people. <laughs> bother the Montanans, dude. <laughs> oh, 
1994, hashtag the year I was born. Boo. Uh, that was actually the worst year on human record. <laughs> uh, Loch Ness based researchers David Martin and Alistair Boyd began to investigate the background of the photograph. Before we get into this, you should know that Boyd was a staunch believer of Nessie and even claimed to have had his own experience with the beast years ago. There is no bias here. He believes in Nessie. So remember yeah, that. There's no bias. You just said it. I'm just telling you that I'm not using an example of someone who doesn't believe in him. He really believes in him. And he thinks he's seen them. Because he's so, there. This event would eventually lead to a lifelong obsession with the beast and ultimately resulted in him becoming a professional researcher in the area. Shortly into their investigation, the duo uncovered a scathing article from 1975 that accused the infamous photo of being little more than that of a hoax. Oddly, the feature hadn't garnered much attention at all when it was produced. Was this the result of Big Nessie trying to do damage control on tourism? Was it Fernando in, in his basement writing about all, you know, how uh, trying to suppress all this information so that way Nessie's story would remain alive and well? Who knows? But what we do know is, despite the lack of reaction from the public, the piece was enough to give the researchers the leads they needed to progress in their study. This would eventually lead the pair to the front door of Christian Sperling's house. Mm. After introducing themselves and notifying the man as to why they were there, the man invited them in and began talking to them. Funnily enough, he proceeded to just casually state to Boyd and Martin that the photograph of the Loch Ness Monster was little more than some wood mounted on top of a toy submarine. How on earth did this man know the answer to this enig enigmatic mystery? According to Sperling himself, his stepfather approached him one day and asked if he would be interested in taking part in fabricating the biggest hoax in Scot Scottish history. His response was pretty much, sure, why not? Like, please, this guy is clearly not a Nessie believer, dude. But the guy who said that was not this man. No, but he's the one that did the investigation. Because he's interested in the facts. Yeah, the man and wants so he's, facts. he's a grifter. He's not an actual Nessie <laughs> investigator. Wanting, just because you are on a certain side or believe something just doesn't mean that, you shouldn't look for the facts. That you're, you're a bias. Anyways, to continue, <laughs> after building the model... "Quote unquote," Nessie was taken to the banks of Loch Ness, I'm where the man's <laughs> where the man's other son, who had access to a brand new camera, proceeded to take some quick photographs of the paper mache sea beast. After that, the pictures were handed off to family friend Robert Wilson, aka the surgeon, to distribute to the public. But why go through all this trouble to fabricate a hoax? You might be asking. What's the point of giving the photos to a surgeon? And who was behind this evil plan? Well, it's not it evil. It was, real. As it turns out, it was none other than the disgraced big game hunter Marmaduke Weatherall. Okay, Scooby Doo, <laughs> and, and he would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for those meddling researchers and their sea monster. <laughs> Apparently, Marmaduke was so upset with everyone who mocked him over the hippo fiasco that he plotted revenge against the media and the public. To do so. He figured he would get everybody else to believe in some misleading evidence as well. As to why he had Robert Wilson claim to have taken the photo, he figured that nobody in his family would have the credibility to make it all happen. But nobody would question a surgeon, apparently. What do you got to say to that? That, uh, she's still real. Fair. I, I don't, this is not a one-sided essay. I it, is you actually, too. it is actually a one-sided essay. <laughs> So you, you, you gave me the one line of evidence that gets immediately contradicted in the next paragraph. So that's actually there is more, I a promise. contradiction. There is more. I, I highly doubt it. Uh, knowing you, I know how you write. <laughs> <laughs> so are we really going to end a legendary story of the Loch Ness Monster with something akin to a subplot of Scooby-Doo villain? Yes, because that's Austin's writing. <laughs> Well, the latest chapter in Nessie's story appears to be a little more than a well-orchestrated revenge plot, there is some evidence that can't be explained by this twist. For starters, we still don't have an explanation for what George Spicer and his wife saw that fateful day along Loch Ness. Additionally, there is some real history behind the legged... The legged? The legged. Legend. 
Additionally, there is some real history behind the legend that goes back as far as 300 AD. According to historians, the Picts, Picts, which were a coalition of tribes that lived in the area during the Middle Ages, may have documented seeing something in the lock centuries ago. Oh, look at that. Another like pre-dating civilization tribe that saw something and has a legend. And, you know, like they're definitely, I don't know why they're making a hoax. This can be found in multiple carvings that have been found in almost every area they were known to inhabit. Today, the depicted creature is known as the Pictish Beast. The creature was definitely important to their society as it makes up over 40% of their recovered artwork. <clears throat> Another ancient example of potential evidence comes from the autobiography of the Saint of Colombo. According to his records, he claimed to have witnessed a gigantic sea beast in 565 AD that supposedly killed a villager. It should be noted, though, that this occurred in the River Ness, not Loch Ness. But, I mean, everyone knows the River Ness leads to Loch Ness, right? It's just obvious. So, as it turns out, it appears that there might still be something lurking in the dark, watery depths of one of Europe's deepest lakes. And if you're a believer like me, not like Austin, who hates everything that's anything remotely fun... That's more than enough to keep on believing. After all this famous words of Nessie, the important thing is that I believe in myself. Yeah. That was the story of Nessie. And I would love to know what most of you guys believe in. Do you believe in the giant sea beast? Do you believe that the Spicers saw a plesiosaur walk across the road? Do you believe that that... I don't know, those researchers are just out to squall the, you know, the story of Nessie. They're hired by the government because the government doesn't want us to know that Nessie's real. I, I want to know what you think. You already know what I think, so I'm not going to say it. You already know what Fernando says or thinks. It's wrong, but it's okay. We, you know, he's, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. That's the beauty of this podcast. So are, are we entitled to our opinion? Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Are we entitled to the, the script writers? Are you entitled to the script all the I'm saying, like, the script writer always, like, the evidence we get is immediately debunked. I mean, I gave you evidence at the end that, you know, contradicts what I might believe. In another pre-civilization tribe. I think it's going to become a trend. I'm saying. <laughs> I will, I'm going to start pick. I'm going to start dissecting some of this and digging deeper into what these civilizations believed. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you could drop us a like, a comment, a review, subscribe if you haven't, you know, if you're on YouTube and you want to maybe take us with you on your commute to work, go on Spotify or Apple or Amazon or wherever you find your audio only podcast and follow us over there. That'd be cool. If you want to see more of us, specifically, you want to see more of us play scary video games, you can find us over on YouTube at you go first gaming. Over there, we got a lot of videos. Follow us over on YouTube, on your audio only, all that stuff. We like to talk to you guys. We would love it if you commented more often and sent us emails and stuff. We want to do things that you want to listen to. So if you have something you want to listen to or hear us talk about, please tell us. We will do it. We are always looking for new suggestions, and there are so many topics out there, and we want to cover as many as we can. So please send them out. All right. So I guess those are the plugs. Fernando? Do you got any final thoughts? Yeah, don't do a disservice to my people's urban legend. If you do, uh, I will never speak to you again. Okay, I won't. Just want to do when I study law, Yorona, I'll do my best. And you better Please. learn how to roll your R's, sir. I will Dude, not have. I, 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 I am R's. not gonna go. I'm not gonna go into this hearing you say la 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 la, dude. Like la la. I can do ya. La, like... your, la Yorona. La Yorona. La Yorona. I can't roll La R's, man. Na. I cannot. Na my, La Spanish, Llorona. my Spanish teacher tried for four years to get me. I don't to, care. I, I do not do care. It. You have to. You got. You better practice this week. I can't. <laughs> I'm saying as soon as we start recording, if I hear La Llorona one time, I'm leaving. I'm not going to have it. I'm out. You're no, waste of a script. You can dub me every time I say it. You can just say it. That's too much editing work. You have to do that yourself. <laughs> I'll give it my best shot, Dad. You better. <laughs> I will have no gringo come into my house. <laughs> Disrespect my people. <laughs> oh. All right. Anyways, I'll, yes. I'll give it my best shot. Thank you.
All right, that is all I have. That's all I have, sir. Okay, well, on that thrilling end and, I guess, exciting beginning, you know, intro to the next video, we're going to leave you here. So remember to stay spooky, everyone, and have a great night. Adios.